Stormfire Productions presents an audio short for Tales from the Hearth, an experiment from the Storyteller Project. The Wedding Gift, a modern folk tale. Once upon a time, there were three brothers who lived by the sea. They were a riotous trio, each more body than the next. The eldest brother was a dancer, a man whose feet flew across floors, tables, chairs, and dragged even the most reluctant of sea dogs onto the dance floor. The middle brother was a charmer. No one could escape his ploy of company and ale, and anyone caught in his web would leave the next morning warm and flattered as if waking from a pleasant dream. The youngest brother was a prankster, a man with the heart of a boy. He shared the playfulness and joy of the dolphins he often swam with in the nearby cove. These three brothers were the joy and bane of their family and community, but they were most beloved by their sister, the youngest child of the family and the most beautiful, gentle, and kind soul. Well, that is compared to her brothers. The brothers brought life and vibrancy wherever they went. So, when their sister announced her engagement, the house nearly imploded from their collective excitement. Oh, what music will you play? The eldest brother asked his sister. What people will you invite? The middle brother prodded his sister. What tricks will you have me play on your new wife? The youngest brother grinned. (laughs) My brothers, I know this wedding will be the talk of the town and mostly because you three will be involved. I have a very important thing to ask of you, however. Will you ensure that all of our guests are honored and taken care of? Of course, the eldest brother promised. Oh, I have plenty of ways to keep your guests happy, the middle brother crowed. We would be honored, the youngest brother bowed. Their sister held out her hand, a slim finger up in the air. Pinky promise? The brothers linked fingers with their sister, and they all laughed. The sister kissed them one by one on the cheek and ran off to continue preparations for the joyous occasion. Invitations were made and sent, and as the week of the wedding approached, the news of the wedding spread far and wide, with excitement growing in the hearts of the community. The brothers went to work, finding the best outfits, the best food, the best musicians, and the best floral arrangements for their beloved sister. The day before the wedding, the three brothers were approached by their mother. I have a very important thing to ask of you. As you know, your beloved grandmother has left this world to be at peace with my father. Before she died, she asked me to gift this pair of dice to the first of our family to be married. She had hoped to give them to my eldest sister, but since my sister chose to leave our family, the dice were passed into my hands, and now the hands of your sister and her fiancé. A pair of dice? What use will they be to our sister? Is this wedding poker themed? Be serious. This is a very special gift. These dice, they are made of solid gold. They are said to bless the couple who receive this as their wedding gift. Do you or do you not want your sister and her future wife to live in good fortune and marital bliss? The three brothers nodded their heads, and their mother was pleased. You must protect these dice. They are very valuable. They will be placed on the wedding altar the morning of the wedding. Can you three handle that? Of course, you can count on us, my lovely mother. Their mother kissed each of her sons and left to continue wedding preparations. 
Wait, does this mean we'll have to miss the wedding party tonight just to keep an eye on our random paradise? The youngest brother asked when their mother was out of earshot. No, of course not. We'll just switch out who keeps an eye on the dice. All three brothers agreed. The eldest would hold on to the dice until midnight. The middle brother would take over until dawn. And the youngest brother would bring the dice to the wedding altar. The youngest brother was happy not to have to worry about any of this over the course of the party, at the very least. That evening, a northerly wind blew over the sea. On it, a small boat made its way unnoticed towards the shores. Everyone in town was gathered for the pre-wedding feast. All were so focused on the wedding festivities that no one was on the dock to greet the stranger. The stranger arrived without any other earthly belongings, only a desire to set things right. The brothers three were the height of the party. They drank and sang and danced and tried to make good on the promise that they all made to their sister. Close to midnight, the brides-to-be bid farewell to the celebrants so they may receive their rest before the big day. It's not even midnight, please. One more dance. Surely the centerpieces of this joyous occasion could bless us with one more hour of their presence. The party's just getting started. Their sister and her fiancé laughed. She drew them close and wagged her finger under their noses. My brothers, it is your job to make sure that every guest here gets a taste of what is to come tomorrow. But careful, hmm? Save up some of that energy for the wedding itself. The brothers agreed wholeheartedly and allowed the women to pass unbothered into the night. As the hour grew late, the brothers drank and danced and kept up their end of the bargain for their sister. Eventually... The eldest brother approached the middle brother. Ugh, these dice are bothering me so. They jingled too hard against my breast when I dance. Brother, would you take them from me for a moment? The middle brother obliged, but then soon found out that they were unflattering against the line of his suit. He approached the youngest brother. My dear, kind, lovely brother, these dice are much too precious to be left with me for too long of a time. Here, I entrust them under your protection. Good man. The youngest brother slipped the dice into his pocket and scanned the dining hall to find any guest unaccompanied or with a sour face. But uh, soon he too found that the dice were obtrusive to his efforts at delivering an effective punchline. He approached his two older brothers. I'm gonna leave the dice locked in our room. Surely they will be safe there till morning. The brothers agreed, too filled with good humor to bother with anything more complicated than that. The youngest brother quickly deposited the dice on the table by his bed and promptly returned to continue with the party late into the night. No guest who was invited left until the fires burned low and the music grew soft. The three brothers, satisfied and exhausted, leaned on one another, singing and laughing until they opened their bedroom door. The dice were gone. In their place was a letter. The youngest brother picked it up and read it to his brothers. My dear relatives, you do not know me for good reason. I have spent too long abandoned by this family, and now you will feel what I have felt for decades. I have taken the dice, which should have rightfully been mine by birth, for who so dares to steal another's rightful fortune? The brides-to-be must understand that love is not eternal, paternal, nor romantic, fraternal even less. I do not wish any of you well, spoiled, rotten children, all of you, 
foolish boys, each of you. May you feel loss and betrayal now before you unleash it on each other. The brothers were frantic about what to do. They had failed in protecting their grandmother's wedding gift, and now their sister might suffer. They rushed to find their mother and ask for her advice. Surely she would know who took the pair of dice. Their mother was solemn as she heard the brother's tale, and as she read the letter, too. It was my sister, your aunt, who stole the dice. As I said, she abandoned our family years ago. You must find her and convince her to return the gift. Or your sister and her new wife will be doomed to a stolen fortune. The eldest brother mused on this. If she's still in town, her boat will be in the dock. The middle brother nodded his head. Come, brothers, we must find our aunt before the rooster crows. We have precious few hours. The brothers left their mother and rushed towards the docks. It wasn't until the shore was in sight that the youngest brother turned to his brothers and spoke. Why would our aunt leave the family? Perhaps she was jealous of her mother? Or maybe she planned to marry someone who was unpleasant, so our grandmother refused to bless the wedding. Either way, we must find a way to convince her to return the dice. There was an unfamiliar boat docked in the marina. The brothers carefully approached. The boat was small, old, tarnished, but well-maintained. On the side of the hall, a name was painted. The Fortune. Bit on the nose, the youngest brother quipped. Shh. All right. I'm the eldest, so I'll go first. The eldest brother stepped onto the deck of the boat. No one was in sight, but... There was a soft light emanating from the boat's cabin window. The eldest brother knocked on the cabin door, and it slowly opened. The cabin was sparsely decorated, but equally well kept. Uh, hello? The eldest brother ventured inside when he heard no answer. There, in the back of the cabin, on a small, dingy table sat the pair of golden dice. Eagerly, the eldest brother rushed forward, but a hand grabbed him before he could reach the dice. What do you think you're doing? The woman before him, his aunt, was stronger than he expected and pulled him off balance. The eldest brother was a great dancer, but only knew how to lead. I, I, I just wish to retrieve the dice for my sister. Please, dear aunt, surely you must wish to join in the festivities as well? I, I'm sure there's enough room on the dance floor for all. I was once a great dancer too, dear nephew. Nimble and young though you are, you will not be able to get past me. The eldest brother did not believe her and tried to faint and spin around his aunt. To his surprise, she was faster, more agile, and more flexible even in the tiny space of the boat's cabin. He never got so much as a hand's breadth away from the dice. Soon, he was out of breath and sweating. He could not outpace the older woman. In defeat, the eldest brother escaped up the stairwell and met his brothers, red-faced and huffing. Uh, oh, wow. I don't think we'll be able to overpower her. I think the dice are giving her the upper hand, or, or foot. The middle brother stepped forward towards the boat cabin. Allow me. Surely, if anyone can charm her into handing over the dice, it would be me. His aunt met him at the foot of the stairwell. 
my lovely aunt, what a shame it is that we have never met before. Please, sit. I, I, I'm i sure dancing with my brother was entirely exhausting. The woman obliged, but her face was cold as ice. I will not hand over the dice. Oh, oh let's not concern ourselves over that. Please, this is the first time I, as your nephew, have met you. I want to know all about you. You must have quite the skill of sailing if you came here all by yourself. Your silver tongue is sweet, dear nephew, but I have met sweeter. You are not welcome to the dice. They are mine by right. The middle brother tried to pry additional information from his aunt, something he could use against her, but eventually... His mouth ran dry until he could barely speak. Outside, the horizon over the waves began to brighten, and a rooster began to crow. Defeated, the middle brother returned up the same way he came. It's, it's no use. None of my words worked. She will not be charmed or convinced. Oh, allow me. The youngest brother insisted. The eldest brother shook his head. You... <laughs> no, little brother. I think not. You are no faster than I. The middle brother cleared his throat and pointed to the horizon. <clears throat> Dawn is breaking. Uh, it's too late. She is not in the mood for jokes or tricks. Indeed... Let, let us go to the wedding. Perhaps there is another gift that will make up for this loss. You two go ahead. I'll catch up. Don't worry, I may be the most flighty of the three of us, but I'm not going to miss my own sister's wedding. The two older brothers shrugged and headed back towards town. The youngest brother headed down into the cabin. The light outside was turned off as the sun's first rays began to touch the hall. In the dim gray light, the youngest brother saw that his aunt was sitting in a chair beside the table, rolling the dice gently in her hand. The gold glinted through her fingers. Perhaps the dice were magic. Um, uh, hello? Uh, I'm also your nephew, but I assume you already knew that. I did, and you will not take these dice from me. You are neither more agile nor more cunning than either of your older brothers. Oh, I, I know. I just figured you'd want to see my ugly mug too. We're family. I'm sorry we've never met before. It must be an awful story. It was, but I'm sure your mother told you everything. I abandoned you all. That's never always the whole story. Like this boat, uh, the Fortune. It was clearly meant to be sailed by at least two people, but you're the only one here. The older woman considered him. How would you know? I know a lot about the sea. It's my favorite place to be. It's not paradise, no way, but it's the best place playground in the whole wide world. I could see why you would take such good care of this boat, so you could be out there. His aunt did not respond. I I'm sure it's lonely being out here all alone. I know I would be. That's why I made friends with dolphins. As the sun grew higher and higher, the youngest brother continued talking about the sea and his love for it. He talked about his childhood, how he and his brothers became terrors of the town. His aunt remained silent. He told the story of his best pranks, how he managed to set his sister adrift while she was sleeping off a particularly rowdy party when they were teenagers. He described her fury when she fell into the water off a huge piece of driftwood. He laughed and laughed and laughed. His aunt spoke 
once the golden light of day filled the cabin and glinted off the dice. You are going to miss the wedding. Ah, well, there are plenty of people there who would tell me how it went. Besides, I made my sister a promise. And what promise was that? To make sure that every guest is honored and taken care of. At that, tears welled up in the woman's eyes. Oh, geez, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to... You arrogant little boy. How can you possibly ensure the happiness of everyone on any given day? You have no magic of your own, no fortune, only stories of your perfect little family, one that stole my paradise. You never had to experience loss, have you? You have never had to look in your wife's eyes and see the life drain from them, knowing that if only you had your inheritance, she could have been saved. You never had to learn of your own mother's passing after. No, you, you have failed. Go away, attend to your sister. Tell her that she is doomed to a hard and unfortunate marriage like the rest of Without the help of magic, you all need to grow the hell up. The younger brother was at a loss for words at this outburst. Perhaps she was right. Perhaps his brothers were right. That he was wasting his time. But he made a promise. A pinky promise, but no matter what, he could never go back on a pinky promise. I, I hate, I, I don't know what it's like to experience loss. I don't, but maybe by losing the opportunity to see my sister get married, I could know a little bit more about you, my aunt. And maybe you're right, growing up matters more than any party. The youngest brother sat in front of his aunt, unmoving as the morning grew on. Surely the wedding ceremony must be over by now. He didn't want to stay. He wanted to see his sister and, and her now wife, their faces bright and shining with the purity of their love and their joy. Would that joy now be tempered by the loss of his presence? Was he simply continuing the cycle that his aunt had held on to for so long? It was not fair. None of it. As he closed his eyes to his tears, he felt the rocking of the boat, the cradle in the sea, and he allowed himself to be comforted by it and the promise that he kept. You foolish boy. It is noon. The wedding is over. What have you done? The youngest brother opened his eyes and saw tears streaming down his aunt's face. He shrugged. I kept a promise. Clearly, you know what it feels like when one is broken. It's not great. I don't want to do that to my sister. His aunt stood slowly, the bitterness in her bones making her stiff and slow. She placed the dice in her pocket and moved towards the cabin door. She opened it, and the cabin filled with the golden light of the fullness of day. Come, my nephew. The youngest brother scrambled to his feet, con confused, and followed his aunt up onto the deck. She moved towards the port side of the boat. He held out his hand and helped her onto the dock. The two of them walked towards town and towards the south cove where the ceremony was to have taken place. When the cove bent and turned into view, the youngest brother frowned. The guests were still sitting in their chairs. It was as if... What? 
the hell took you so long? His sister, clothes shining like the sun and her hair coiled like a crown, grabbed him from the wooden walkway leading to the ceremony site. The youngest brother jumped, startled. His two older brothers were standing on either side of his sister, their faces a mix of exasperation and hope. The youngest brother turned to his sister in amazement. What is going on? Shouldn't the ceremony be over by now? We've been waiting for you. I couldn't possibly get married without my brothers by my side. The youngest brother's eyes welled with tears again, and he whooped, swooping his sister into his arms. <laughs> you will never need no stinking paradise. I will ensure that every single day of your life is filled with laughter, you hear me? His sister beat him playfully with her fist, complaining about him rumpling her outfit. When he finally put her down, he turned her towards the older woman standing a few paces away. Sister, this is our aunt. Your guest list is all checked off now. The sister rushed to pull her newfound aunt into a hug with all the exuberance of a woman who knew nothing of the difficulty of the moment. Welcome. Thank you so much for coming. The aunt slowly but surely returned the embrace. We have delayed your happiness long enough. Her aunt held out her hand. In her palm were the shining pair of golden dice. The sister looked between her aunt and her youngest brother, and she understood. Keep them. Your presence is gift enough. Her aunt embraced her again, and then went down to the cove to join with the other guests. The eldest brother ran down alongside her to signal to the musicians to begin playing. He danced his way back to his siblings. The three brothers escorted their sister to the altar, where her partner stood, equally radiant in her love and exasperation for the delay. But... As we all know, a happily ever after is not something that can be forced, or ignored, or cursed, or killed. It can only be delayed for a while. The end. The Wedding Gift was written, performed, and produced by Lisa Alvarez. Tales from the Hearth is a podcast created as a part of the Storyteller Project. In total, I will have worked 21 hours this week, on my own, to produce and market this single narrator, half-hour-ish episode. Audio drama creators are often a little too humble about the amount of work that goes into making a story they are proud of. And there's a reason why many of us, including myself, tend to seek outside resources to make it happen. Whether that's people with additional skills or funding or simply a larger network, creative process requires community. Now, this particular experiment was a solo one, but I wanted to see what I could do in a week and if I could tap into something ephemeral that my community wanted. The Storyteller Project Micro Crowdfund runs through Sunday, December 4th. If you've enjoyed what you heard, please consider contributing what you can. This bard's virtual hat is officially being virtually passed around the virtual bar. Don't forget to tip your waiters, virtual and in real life, of course. <laughs> so if you are listening to this after December 4th, you can always support the work of Stormfire Productions by becoming a patron on Patreon. 
my hope is to rerun this experiment again in the new year. I hope it will continue to help me practice my storytelling skills and provide my community with nuggets of stories that will stick with them in one way or another. I also hope that eventually it will generate enough financial support that I can hand off the excess to another storyteller who wants to run the same experiment. After this, you will likely hear, uh, probably tomorrow, a interview uh, with another storyteller. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, this was fun. <laughs> and now I am going to enjoy hibernating for the winter, telling more stories in person with my loved ones. I hope you will too. And maybe, just maybe, y'all can regale yours with your own hearthside version of the wedding gift. Thank you for listening.